Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Hare with the Puccini Poland Group, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this ribbon cutting. Uh, I think the governor, uh, the mayor, maybe even Chris Heck have all said, didn't we already cut this ribbon? <laughs> and uh, this is maybe the third of six or seven we plan to have here at the Sixers Fieldhouse. And I think for good reason. When we last gathered uh, January 23rd, uh, it was basically to celebrate uh, the launch of the Delaware Blue Coats uh, new season in their new facility. At that time, basically what was complete was the Blue Coats facility. And uh, the balance, now we celebrate the completion of our indoor field as well as our outdoor field. And uh, we're also pleased to report, as we will throughout this event, the many successes that we've enjoyed uh, since the opening. Uh, although the humidity is certainly nowhere comparable, I know the power of the sun is from the day that we broke ground uh, last August. Uh, it was good. We had 15 speakers and only four people passed out. So uh, we count that as a success. Uh, and the Blue Coats nearly killed four of their uh, commemorative uh, revolutionary or honor guard who wore all wool that day. And uh, so th th they're, they're actually watching on a video from an air conditioned facility. But this is an extraordinary place, 161,000 square feet, two indoor fields, uh, two in addition to three world-class tenants, uh, starting with the Delaware Blue Coats on the auspices of the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, the brand that they bring to Wilmington is powerful. We're grateful for that. And also uh, the power of the 76ers brand also convinced confidence, I think, in our elected officials and the broader community that this project would be a success. Although the 76ers are the headliners, the Blue Coats are our lead tenants, we also have uh, Titus Sports Training in our facility, as well as Nemours, and the power of those brands in this community is equally powerful. And because they're all here, makes this project a reality. Uh, when, it was two years ago, Chris, Rob, uh, we sat down with the governor to pitch this project, and the governor couldn't help but express his warmth and <laughs> tremendous uh, affection for the NBA and its brand of basketball. Here the president of the 76ers was in town, said we want to bring our G League affiliate to Wilmington and uh, all that that brings, the power of the brand, uh, bringing people to the city, uh, people to stay in our hotels, uh, to promote Wilmington as a destination for professional sports. And the governor went on to explain his passion for college basketball, his uh, trouble understanding the way the NBA played offense. He didn't think people guarded. And despite that fact, uh, Chris came anyway. Uh, but a part of that conversation, the governor was very clear that he was supportive of any facility, uh, one that people would make an investment of this size in, its, in the city and in the state, and also one that would serve the youth of the community. And we're proud to report over the first 150 days of this facility that uh, we've brought in more than 10,000 kids uh, through various programs uh, taking advantage of our <laughs> AAU tournaments, uh, summer, or pardon me, uh, youth, city youth basketball tournament, uh, our city youth on the pitch uh, soccer event. It was just a play day that was just uh, here last Friday. So the city, the state, and the Bocchini Poland Group and its partners remain committed that this is a beacon uh, for the city uh, youth to take advantage of athletic activities. So, Governor, uh, we're off to a good start. Uh, I know you're committed to this. We are as well. So, uh, on behalf of a grateful developer for making this happen, please come forward. Governor John Carney. You're always in trouble when you're introduced by Mike Carey. You never know what he's going to say. But I'll tell you what. I can't be happier with what uh, we see at this 76ers Fieldhouse. Uh, Chris, you and your team and the Blue Coats and Titus and the Moors, it really is incredible. It's brought an incredible facility to our state. And most importantly, it's brought a, a facility that our young people, particularly those in the city of Wilmington, can use and they have already. I was attending a, a 125th anniversary of the Monday Club Ball over the weekend. 
and we made some introductory remarks, and the mayor came after I had a, a chance to congratulate the, the men of the Monday Club of 425 years of service to our city and our state. And the mayor was jumping out of his skin for the fact that they had an event here with 800 of our city kids out here for a soccer clinic. It seems like every time I come to this facility, it gets better. The first time, Mike, it was a little rough for that first ribbon cutting. It was about 200 degrees out here. The poor <laughs> revolutionaries that joined us in their wool garb was a little rough. Then I've been back for several basketball games, which got better with each, each uh, outing. Then we had the Storman's classic reunion where all the old guys came back and they, they actually let me coach one of the teams. Then the next time I came back, the indoor field was almost done. Then the next time I visited down here, we had the outdoor uh, turf fields that are being completing. And then today we're having the official uh, ribbon cutting where the parking lots are done. And this is just an ex incredibly exciting facility for our city and our state. But Mike Hare is right. The reason for the state's, state's participation and partnership in this project was to make sure that we had first class facilities for the children growing up uh, here in our city and around Newcastle County and across the state of Delaware. And this is one of the finest athletic facilities that you can find, I'm sure, anywhere in the country, Chris. Uh, great basketball, great facilities. It's an incredible asset to have to our community. And I just want to thank all the people who made it happen, which include the, the taxpayers of the state of Delaware. This is an incredibly, going to be an incredibly successful investment for all of us. It's going to make our city a better and more attractive place for people to visit and, and come and, and be down here in these fields and to watch the blue coats. And I just want to thank everybody who took the risk on all of us for making this possible for the children of our state. In particular, I see Representative Stephanie Bolden, who's a member of our General, General Assembly representing this district. Members of City Council are here as well. But our, and I see Frank Cook over there, Representative. I hope I'm not missing anybody else. But importantly, these legislators put their votes behind the, the investment that we have in this facility. And it's a great investment, and I want to thank everybody who's made it happen. And I look forward to coming down here more and more and seeing more and more of our children and our young people enjoying sports and learning more and getting care from the Moors and getting stronger uh, with Titus. It's just a great facility. So thank you all for making it happen. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I think one of the questions now that this facility, well, still there's plenty of people in and around the area say, what is that big building, uh, you know, along South Walnut Street? Uh, so they tell them. And then maybe this follow-up question is, what was there before? And the answer is nothing, uh, and less than nothing. It was a dump. And uh, but for uh, the Riverfront Development Corporation uh, five, six years ago, Mike, uh, acquiring the land, uh, just in the interest that development is eventually going to come to this side of the river, uh, come further south uh, towards the county line, uh, we're grateful. And uh, the person who headed up the Riverfront Development Corporation at that time, Mike Perzicki, and because he had that vision, we thought he ought to be the mayor. Please welcome Mike Perzicki. <clears throat> Megan really did all the work, but I, I got the credit. <clears throat> Let's see, where to begin? Uh, the governor is right. The other day, I was, uh, I was pretty excited at the Monday Club talking about the day uh, that I had had the day before. And it was really, I think, Tanny, I think it was the best weekend uh, that we've had in two and a half years. I started out, I started out uh, Friday morning when Rob called and said, you got to come down here and see this camp we're doing down here. And I got here, and it was almost the revelation of everything that, that they had been talking about, having our young kids down here. There were just 800 kids just scurrying in every direction, just having a blast. And you couldn't take the smile off their faces. And there are kids. I mean, it was most of them were Wilmington kids. It was a really big thing for us. And then I had to go back uh, later that afternoon because Stephen A. Smith came to town. And so at 4 o'clock, back I came to this building where Stephen A. Smith announced 
that he was going to take ESPN's broadcast of his show to this building in the fall when we have our HBCU week, where over the last couple of years we've had 1,700 kids uh, uh, come in uh, and visit with us at their college fair and 1,000 kids admitted to school on the spot and $2 million of scholarships awarded. Well, he didn't know anything about this until he was invited to a, uh, to a, a black tie dinner we had for the event where he was a speaker, which he agreed to do uh, gratis, which was a nice gesture. But he was so impressed with Wilmington's commitment to HBCUs, he called back and said, here's what I want to do. So that's, so he wound up, he wound up um, committing to do so much, and Wilmington is top of mind with him right now. I am on his website this week, walking him in here. <laughs> that is the only way I'm ever going to get into ESPN's website, and I don't care. I'm happy to be there. But the reason, the thing I wanted to tell you was that when, when Stephen and his assistant, Sumatra, came here walking around the place, their first impression was, wow, this is really a great facility. Now, I might remind you, he has been in every great athletic facility on the planet. I mean, if you told me there was something in Uzbekistan that he wouldn't be in, I would be amazed. You know, the guy just goes everywhere. And they came in here and said, wow, what a great facility. And so I took that as such a compliment, and you should too, because obviously here's a guy with a PhD in, in uh, facilities. Uh, we, we had a great weekend. We finished off with two days of the Jazz Festival, which was fantastic. We had 7,000 people downtown Wilmington. We had Nora Jones in here Saturday night. Marcus Street was hopping. But I have to tell you, you know, the, uh, the, most, the most rewarding moments of the day really came in this building. Rob and Chris, and I know this is one of many, many, many of those kinds of uh, those kinds of events that uh, those kinds of days that I'm going to have down here. I, th I think it's important to say, and I know that you know she'll be up here to talk about it later. But you know, Megan, Mike, Mike left some years ago, and uh, working with Rob, thank God he did. Now, now that that came out wrong. Thank God he did, because he's a member of a great team and a very productive member of the team. He was with us for for 10, 12, 13 years. But, um, but Megan and I did this, and really I'm, I'm just so happy that she's here because we together sat down and talked about what could this land be and should we extend ourselves to try to take control of this land, and we did. And then Megan and the RDC was a bit, were a big part of the infrastructure that this thing requires. So between the governor, RDC, the city, I'm just so proud. I continue to be proud to be part of this great effort. So uh, thank you all very much. and. Uh, we'll, Cut another ribbon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Our next two speakers uh, are from Wilmington City Council, and we are very grateful to the continued support of uh, Wilmington City Council for many of the projects with which we're involved, and especially for this one. Uh, this, this is also supported by uh, significant funding from the City of Wilmington, and it's meaningful. This, but for that support, this project would not have been possible. So our first speaker, please welcome uh, dear friend and the president of the Wilmington City Council, Hanifa Shabazz. Well, I think, Rob and Chris, I think this is maybe 101 ribbon cutting we've done together so far. Um, this is really exciting to be able to do the official ribbon cutting for this amazing facility, you know, to have such a big icon on the entrance and exit of the southern part of Wilmington is letting people know that Wilmington definitely is moving forward. You know, we talked a lot about the benefits that it has had for our young people, the programs already to date, of uh, the experiences that our young people have experienced. But I didn't, as always, I always talk about the economic workforce development that it brings to the city of Wilmington. This facility will provide over 100 part-time positions and numerous full-time positions, and I'm quite sure that will continue to grow as it continues to build itself out and the amazing events that come, that come to the, the facility. Um, it's definitely not only just a beacon that the Wilmington is growing, but also the collaboration that we have going on in the development of Wilmington. Um, you can't deny the fact that our current mayor is, is a heck of a businessman and knows how to partner with the necessary partners that we have in our business in our city, whether it's the business developers or our bankers, but also our government. We talked about the state, 
participation, the city participation, but we also left out the county also and was, was involved in this as we had to annex to make sure we had all of the fields. And I can recognize the Newcastle County COA, Ms. Uh, Vanessa Phillips, who's also in the, in the audience that worked with us to get that done. So these type of facilities is not only showing the development of Wilmington, what's happening with Wilmington, the continuation of Wilmington moving forward, but it's showing how the teamwork, the synergy, the no longer working in silo attitude that we used to have, that things are changing. We see the value of working together, collaboratively partnering and unifying to make sure that all of the quality of life issues are addressed for the citizens of Wilmington and, and also the state of Delaware. So I'm glad to be able to take a part in this and look forward to other things that's coming forward because I know we're gonna have ribbon cutting number 102 coming soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Our next speaker is, uh, is our district councilwoman. And uh, I remember shortly after uh, we talked, I guess it was the press event, Chris, uh, in the mayor's office when uh, you announced the plans to bring the blue coats to Wilmington to be part of this facility. And it was maybe a day later, I heard uh, Councilmember Harley on the radio uh, advocating for city support for a project, recognizing the significant leverage of a 30 plus million dollar project uh, that was going to be impactful for the city and mo more importantly impactful for the residents of the city. So an early advocate as she has been for development throughout her district, please welcome Councilwoman Michelle Harley. Okay. Thank you, Mike. So first of all, I'm going to want to start off by um, saying good afternoon to everyone. And I am really excited to be here today to represent the 4th Councilmatic District. This is not only a great day for the 4th District and the City of Wilmington, but it's also a great day for the State of Delaware. This is something to be said. There is definitely something to be said about driving into our great city and being greeted by the sight of this beautiful new facility emblazoned with the name of one of the most celebrated sports franchises in the country, the 76ers. It definitely sends a message to our visitors and our residents alike that Wilmington is doing big things and is well on its way to claiming its place amongst the mid-Atlantic states as the region's place to live, work, and play. I'm also excited and happy about our youth and families throughout the city and the state, having another safe facility to play sports and to have fun with their family and friends and even social events. To name a few, the Wendell Smallwood Football Clinic, the Bash with Cardi B, and the Storm and Norman Reunion Classic. This state-of-the-art venue has been a long time coming, wouldn't you say? So in my closing, I just want to thank the Philadelphia 76ers, the Buccini Pollen Group, the governor, our mayor, and many others for their work in bringing the Delaware Blue Coats and this world-class facility to Wilmington. Thank you all. That was terrific. Thank you very much, Councilmember Harley. Uh, she's been mentioned a few times uh, by now by the mayor. Uh, Megan McGlinchey, uh, who's a dear friend and former colleague. Uh, I don't know if former can't, uh, really applies because we, we talk quite a bit about many things along the riverfront. But uh, maybe we oversimplified the fact that RDC had the vision uh, by the ground and then we could build something on it. I guess failed to mention uh, that it is a brownfield. Uh, the, the property was a dump. And I don't mean that metaphorically. Literally, it was a dump. And uh, so that had all, plenty of uh, environmental implications. Oh, by the way, half the property is in Newcastle County, and you have to annex that, which requires the approval of two legislative bodies. Oh, by the way, uh, Deldat is already building a bridge project. How do you make all this road infrastructure marry up with what is already planned? And uh, so the challenges were significant, and it was really uh, Megan's charge to work through that with our team, but we're very grateful for her leadership and commitment to this project. Please welcome the Executive Director of the Riverfront Development Corporation, Megan McGlinch. Thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike mentioned, the RDC uh, 
uh, did assemble all of the land um, for this project, and we were honored to, to play a part in bringing this project to Wilmington. Uh, we were also responsible for the new road network um, that you see around the complex. So I wanted to just take a few minutes to thank the construction team um, that worked on the project. Uh, folks from Petnero, RKK, Brightfields, Environmental Alliance, and Corrado American. Uh, this was probably quite possibly the most challenging project that we ever worked on on the riverfront, um, but our team worked through all of these challenges and got the job done. Um, also like to thank um, our friends at Delbot and Denrec, Secretary Garvin is here, and uh, Secretary Cohen, uh, who were our, uh, our partners through the entire project, and we know we absolutely could not have done it without their support, so thank you. Um, and even though uh, the construction of the roads uh, took a little bit longer than we all have, would have liked, I think the final product, now that we see it, is, is, uh, is worth the wait. I um, want to thank Governor Carney and Mayor Przicki, as well as the members of the General Assembly, Wilmington City Council and County Council, uh, for their continued support of all of our projects on the riverfront. Um, and thank you to Rob and Chris for your vision and your commitment to our city and to our riverfront. Uh, the sports complex, we believe, will be a tremendous resource for our community and for the young people who live here. And with the construction of the new Christina River Bridge right across the street, which will link both sides of the riverfront, um, the visitors to the field house will be able to take advantage of the many, many amenities that we have on the west side of the river. And we're confident that the field house will be a magnet here on the east side of the river, spurring new developments and opportunities for years to come. So thank you. Thank you, Megan, not only for your remarks, but for all your hard work in making this a reality. Uh, we talked about uh, Rob and Chris's vision, and uh, I think certainly I'm on the payroll, so I can't deny that, but I don't think anyone who has seen what's happened in our city can either uh, over the last 20 years, uh, the impact uh, that they've had. Uh, what is probably equally powerful as their passion and their vision uh, is their force of will. Projects like this don't happen uh, without force of will. You don't start a project, and you, most of you were there uh, last August when you saw maybe uh, three or four uh, steel beams in the air, and then January 23rd, there's a game going on inside this building. Uh, that's extraordinary, and that's the commitment. Not only the commitment to each project, but the commitment to the city and the people who live here. Please welcome Rob Buccini. I want to thank uh, Megan McGlinchey and the Mayor Przicki for assembling this land because at the end of the day our business is all about having site control land that is developable. This obviously would not have happened if you all did not have the foresight to assemble the land so um, we would not be here. So you know some very fundamental decisions uh, make uh, for a, a very successful project even before you know it. The second thing that happened here was uh, we had the good fortune to meet Chris Heck um, several months ago. And Chris is a wonderful person, a very fair businessman, and we've developed a friendship in the negotiations of the complex, which helps that they had a great season. Uh, if it, our friendship may not have developed as quickly if it was two or three years ago. But what's a, what really is impressive is the depth of the organization uh, that they run. Desron Dorsett, who has uh, been a key member of the 76ers uh, team here, has also become a, 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 great, uh, a great friend of our company. And we are very grateful for the handshake deal that we had and what that led to in, in the documentation process. Thank you. So the one thing Chris said is that the facility has to be ready in time for Lowry's team to at least play half the season here. Uh, that was in June. Um, and so we went down to our construction group, uh, John Groff, Wes Schwant, Ryan Giver, the whole team. And we said here, we think that a facility will fit in this approximate site. Uh, we need to be open by January 1st. Um, so uh, we gave them a hand sketch. Um, Wesley quickly came back and mentioned that we have power lines running through the lot. We have a, 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 a swell that's a wetlands on the side. We have new road construction going on. And he's like, we can do it as long as the field is not a full-size field. I said, it has to be a full-size field. And we have to have 3,000 
uh, seats for the 76ers and the blue coats. And somehow you pigeonholed all that in, uh, which was remarkable. Um, and then we closed and on our construction loan the day after our groundbreaking. So it was not exactly the most relaxing groundbreaking that we've had because the steel was up. Uh, we were in the process of uh, closing on the land from uh, the buying the land from the Riverfront Development Corporation. But Ron Weingrad, our uh, go-to lender at WSFS, was on the other side of the deal, and we knew uh, that Ron would come through with Rachel at Fulton Bank. And so we are very, very appreciative for the WSFS relationship. Thank you. The uh, governor and the mayor, it goes without saying, without your capital in this project, this would never happen. The roads, uh, the governor eagerly uh, funded uh, a portion of the expansion. Right away, we built, uh, we added a field, and uh, we're very appreciative for that. It's one of the few lighted fields in the city of Wilmington, um, so we have the ability to go 10, 11, midnight at night. So without uh, the two of you all and your financial commitment, there is no question that in no way would this facility be here, this field house be here today. So thank you both so very much. We had various uh, approvals, uh, municipal processes that we had to go to with the city and the county. And I know once we have Council President Hifa Shabazz and Councilwoman Michelle Harley on our team, we will get things done. These women are a force of nature. Um, they are our biggest advocate on so many things, and I hope we've made you proud. So I'm, I'm so very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hanifa. Um, I'd like the uh, field house operations team to stand up. Where's Kevin? Is Kevin around? No? Steve, come, come here for just one second. And Trevor and Jay. Jay, come here, guys. Who else is uh, from the team? Trevor's here. So these people, uh, they've had a lot of uh, education in sports management. It was all on the fly. In 150 days, they have had 3,700 City of Wilmington uh, children, youth athletes, through the door at zero cost. No cost at all. And that includes us providing gear, uniforms, we started the Wellington Basketball League with their own uh, logo. We've had various lacrosse not-for-profits, soccer nonprofits. Our biggest one was this past Friday. It is amazing what three people have done. And they do work, and I, and I don't, uh, this is no hyperbole, they are 18 hours a day, seven days a week. It is, it is amazing, and it's been inspirational for our, our whole company, the work ethic. And in addition to all of those hours, They've also raised almost $300,000 in real cash for various charities. So that is really, not only have you provided a place to play, but they've also given back. So I, 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 it is just humbling um, how well they've done. So thank you all so very much. They've hosted, as was mentioned earlier, blue coats in one week we had a blue coats game zaire smith was in the house we had elton brand in the house we had cardi b we had um hold on i have to turn the page um and we had an oar concert we had the wbl the wilmington basketball league which is for our high school teams and then we had um, the sean lock event and the police and firemen just had a basketball tournament this past weekend on Saturday. So it really is extraordinarily in such a short period of time uh, what you all have accomplished. We had the event on, Saturday, on a Friday with the 800 children, and by the time the Stephen A. Smith event occurred, the place was completely clean and staged for uh, the SPN announcement. So again, I, I cannot uh, thank you all enough. You all walk the walk. We made lots and lots and lots of promises to people that we see often that have a lot of uh, a jurisdiction over us, uh, the governor, the mayor, and even And uh, you certainly have made us look so very good. Um, and I'm deeply appreciative. Uh, and also to the Nemours Hospital, they have been an unbelievable partner, uh, and to the Titus uh, Sports 
uh, group. You guys are just the best, and it's wonderful to see how so quickly you all have ramped up and brought people here. So thank you all very much for the time. Okay, apparently I didn't thank enough of the construction people, but where is Ryan Gibbler and his team? Would you guys come up here? Ryan, come here. The whole Vinny, Vinny. Sorry. Yeah. So these, these, these men, they did work on Christmas Day. So I called on Christmas Ryan because we were getting ready to open for the Blue Coats a few weeks later. And Don, where is Donnie? Donnie uh, picked the phone up and Donnie was here. And uh, we had painters here. We had these guys overseeing the group. They gave a lot of personal sacrifice in the midst of a few childbirths, which uh, my advice, which hopefully PR, our, our HR group did not hear, was there's not much that you can do with a newborn. So it's a really, it's an appropriate time to be at work. Ryan's wife did not necessarily agree with that. Our HR group has never heard that before, um, but I couldn't be more proud. I mean, you all were managing a very complex project. You were, when needed, picking up trash, one of my favorite pastimes, driving equipment around the site and doing whatever it took. And I wish Donnie was here. He's around, uh, but I wanted to thank uh, you all so much. It, it, it was uh, incredible that we started this in August. So thank you so much. You shouldn't be too impressed. Christmas Day is not a recognized holiday at the Bocchini Poland Group, so uh, you shouldn't. And Donnie doesn't like his family, so he wanted to be here. So I was at my in-law, so I was looking for things to do. So uh, we are going to cut a ribbon because get people out of the heat. So I'm going to ask all of our speakers to step over Three, to the ribbon. I'm two, ask, uh, one. So we welcome you to come in.